message brought to you by Snow Teeth Whitening. Whiten your teeth in nine minutes anywhere you go. And use the promo code Let It Snow for 25% off today. Check the description and pin comment for that link. Thousands of people took to the streets of Washington, D.C. to support the president's attempts to block Joe Biden's election. A good morning, and those demonstrations turning violent overnight. Overnight, tense clashes in Washington as thousands of Trump supporters rallied ahead of the Electoral College vote. Violence erupting between pro and anti Trump demonstrators, leading to dozens of arrests. Here, a female officer being assisted as she limps away from the protest zone. Four people reportedly stabbed. Welcome back, everybody. If you're anything like me, you spent the weekend watching these mass demonstrations by the Proud Boys and Trump supporters in Washington. The one thing that I came away with is that it was actually really mostly peaceful. From what I saw, and I watched hours and hours over the course of the weekend, were mostly just Proud Boy members in large groups, I'm guessing mixed with uh, other Trump supporters, uh, marching around in Washington looking for Antifa but never really finding them. Uh, anytime that they did find them, they got blocked by police, uh, and then they would just try to move and split up. Uh, but every time that they would encounter Antifa, they would be blocked off by the police. Now, I do realize that there were a couple examples of small scuffles between small groups of Antifa and the Proud Boys. Now, keep in mind that the Proud Boys and the other Trump supporters who were there were not there to, like, burn and loot or attack people. They were there specifically to show their support for Trump. And if Antifa wanted to show up and fight with them, they were ready for that, too. The fact is, there were thousands of Trump supporters there. If they wanted to be violent, you would know it. But, unsurprisingly, since we're living under this Orwellian, CCP-esque state media complex, they saw it completely different. Thousands of people took to the streets of Washington, D.C. to support the president's attempts to block Joe Biden's election. A good morning and those demonstrations turning violent overnight. Overnight, tense clashes in Washington as thousands of Trump supporters rallied ahead of the Electoral College vote. Violence erupting between pro and anti Trump demonstrators, leading to dozens of arrests. Here, a female officer being assisted as she limps away from the protest zone. Four people reportedly stabbed. Wrong. Ask yourself. What was the one thing you didn't see there during this report where they're describing these protests as, quote, turning violent? Could it be maybe violence? I mean, I saw a couple people shouting at a car and a random scuffle with a few police with who knows who. Tell me, how is this mostly peaceful? Nationwide unrest sparked by the police killing of George Floyd could lead to the highest insurance payout of its kind in history. The protests in late spring were mostly peaceful, but damage from looting and arson will cost one to two billion dollars in claims. Police in Portland rushed protesters late last night as they've done frequently during more than three months of clashes and demonstrations. Protests were mostly peaceful. Many of the protests have been peaceful. We can't emphasize that enough. Should be noted that the a demonstration here in Washington, and this is this is the case around much of the country as well, those demonstrations were largely peaceful. And I just want to reiterate, most of the protests that we saw this weekend were peaceful. But most protests remained peaceful. There have been mostly peaceful demonstrations. And I think it's so important, Kareem, to make the distinction between, for the most part, these protests are peaceful. One woman told me she couldn't help but notice how beautiful it all was. But less than a dozen people out of thousands of people getting in a couple random fist fights is turning violent. This is an old media tactic. I remember back during the Obama years, during the tea parties, the media would always describe them as violent or turning ugly yet would describe violent left-wing protests that involved fighting with riot cops as mostly peaceful. On the streets, there was anger. Riot police were called in to try to control demonstrators protesting outside the Capitol. Most were peaceful. A handful threw bottles at police and were arrested. And outside, protesters against the plan gathered on the streets of the Capitol where late today we learned words shouted turned very ugly. 
Late word from Washington tonight about just how ugly the crowds gathered outside the Longworth office building have become. I'd also like to point out that when Trump got elected and Democrats protested it, it was held up as democracy in action. But when it happens to Democrats, it's attempting to overturn an election. A charge that we were constantly leveling at them the last four years, so of course they have to now turn it around and blame us of what they were engaging in. They also heavily implied that the officer limping away and those four stabbing victims were all victims of Trump supporters. Wrong. Nope, they were just outright lying. According to the leader of the Proud Boys, all the victims of the stabbings were Trump supporters, and the attacker was a left-wing Antifa member. This information was pretty easy to find, so I guess give me a job at ABC and NBC News. But I think we all see the tactic here. They're vague on purpose as to not generate any negative attention towards their foot soldiers. And overnight, the remnants of that pro-Trump demonstration here in Washington turning violent. D.C. police say four people were stabbed, more than 20 arrested. See, again, it's implied that those four stabbings were committed by a Trump supporter. And it's amazing to me that they're given this much cover to a group that's known for stabbing people. All I'm saying is that this report shouldn't have been so vague and shouldn't have been implying that Trump supporters were the perpetrators. That's all for this one. If you found it informative, please share the video and hit like on your way out. If you'd like to support this channel, you can find all those links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.